Hey everyone, welcome back to Vibe Cafe, where we dive deep into the world of community, connection, and innovation. And today we've got a conversation with Mark McCormick and Just Friday. Uh, Mark is heavily involved in his new World Spirit project, and Jess is building a community brand village for neurodivergence. Uh, it was a beautiful conversation. Uh, I thoroughly enjoyed it. Both amazing people. Uh, highly recommend you, uh, you reach out if you find uh, resonance with them. I'll include their Twitter handles in the uh, show notes. So stick around, enjoy, and hi, Bon. Hi. Hooray! <laughs> All right, now it's working. Yay. Oh, we're like jamming here, like right from the beginning and I wanted to like yeah, ca um, capture that uh, so thank you for that you're welcome well thanks for inviting uh, us into the space of course so of course. global cooperative mm, yeah yeah to, pr to prevent any one ideology or power structure from having economic power over any other yeah which is kind of a paradox right because it could go either really well or it can go really wrong and I'm like, well, we're already going in the wrong direction. Uh, we're getting some kind of like super class thing that is going to be global, but it's not respecting the individuals and any, any true structure, according to this universal logic stuff that we follow has to have three moments in it, the universal, the particular and the individual. And right now it seems like in one sense, we have a lot of hyper individualism, which is where consumerism is coming from. Um, but the universal doesn't respect that properly so you got like the worst of the universal and the worst of the individual it's not it's spiraling out of control so i thought well how do you make a global structure that doesn't do that protects the individual but doesn't lead to this hyper consumerism it leads to this sort of spirit kind of like community belonging which is the real value having experiences together yeah. which is what this room is about victor you're bringing us together right now and then we're supposed to create ideas and ideas are what create the sort of novelty of life. And then you're supposed to make that a quality of life thing. And, and so I thought, well, if you don't go global, you're, somebody will come in and do it anyway. And I thought, okay, cooperative structures. We think that it has to be this. I was working with these Uber drivers and um, we used their app and it was just totally exploited us. Like they're using AI to map and predict. You can't escape it. It's already that good. Mm -hmm. And so we got freaked out and we tried to unionize them. But being in, you know, international justice and, you know, poverty eradication, I know that the unions have been eroding for like 40 years and they're not very powerful. And then when we went to unionize, well, when we went to unionize, that was confirmed by the people we worked with. They said, yeah, yeah, the unions are fighting worse than ever. And uh, I guess to make a long story short, I was able to get a bunch of the workers of Uber um, on board with unionizing them because they said, look, you're a white guy. And a lot of them are Somalis, Ethiopians, or they're marginalized communities. That's why Uber can exploit them. Um, they said, we don't really trust you. Like, you know, you're part of the system, or at least you look like mm -hmm. it. And, and I said, well, actually, I mean, I was born into poverty in Canada. So my friends are all indigenous and, you know, marginalized communities. And, uh, I said, look, guys, I've been looking at this international development for decades and uh, we have to do the union thing a little bit. But I said, I don't think it's the full solution. They're like, you're right. We want you to make us an app that we own. And if you make us an app that we own, then we'll help you do the union thing. But you, you have to do this. This is the real solution. And I'm like, you know you're what? Right. Hollow, hollow ride share in Hawaii. What's this? Hollow, hollow ride share is like the or it last i checked i don't know what's going on on in hawaii right now but it was it was it had like pretty much equal market share with uber and that's because someone from the hawaiian community said hey let's make our own app and because it's such a, a, a you know a small and and you know there's there's enough solidarity there and it's small enough that they were able to work together to make it happen i think it's still owned by only a one one or few people in hawaii but the since its purpose was there for com their uh for their community they were able to bring that together and it did do for very well so th nice. we're so uh, segmented and spread out and hyper individualized and afraid to ask for help in larger groups, which is why that doesn't work. So that's why the the solution is 
it, it, it has to be like like the village marketplace can't be just for everybody it has to be just for one segment of the population and because otherwise we're not gonna be able to work together because our perspectives are too different which you 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 really articulated there but i didn't know if you knew, knew about hollow hollow um that it's sort of there's a precedent and it's been done well that's exactly what i want to learn more about because we need to start getting these groups kind of working together to push uber out or like get get the market share and mm -hmm. what we ended up saying is, well, it can't just be any kind of app. It does have to preserve the local. Mm -hmm. And it also has to be global, though. So we're like, oh, that's a contradiction. Mm -hmm. So we said, well, it has to be a global worker owned cooperative social enterprise app. That's the, the structure that we have to make these apps under. And I feel like this Hawaiian one, there's also one in Canada that's kind of budding. But it's really about market share. If these big conglomerates can push you around, you can never build up enough to challenge mm -hmm. them. And if you do get big enough to challenge them, then you're just doing the global thing again. Mm -hmm. So I, I feel like we have to do the global and local as a contradiction, but just like everything else in life, it's like all contradictions, like male, female, like capitalist, communist, like we're all ripping apart because of these opposites. And we need to sort of do this integrated, non-linear maybe neurodivergent kind of thinking is what <laughs> uh, dr octopus at the dr octopus movement which is also a neurodivergent kind of community oh yeah um, yeah i've heard of that do you know about it yeah yeah i'm in their facebook group but i don't really know anyone from from there um they're amazing you should <laughs> <laughs> i will introduce you to doctor in fact that's might might be what the point of this is is maybe i'm supposed to connect your crew with his crew mm -hmm. Because he has about 4,000 neurodivergents, uh, apparently, or nonlinear thinkers, he calls them. And we're inviting them into this bigger project, too, which is more than just the app. And the app we were going to call, like, the Worldwide Essential Workers app because of the pandemic, you know, all the essential workers were forced to go out there because they had no power because the local's not respected. It's just too global. Mm -hmm. So I feel like the, the Hawaiian thing and, and the Canadian, all the local groups, all that legal ownership means is it guarantees that the, the, the legal structure, the whole has to listen to the parts. Like it has to listen to the people on the local so that the messages on the ground actually make it to the top and you stop oppressing everybody. The nuance of human experience is captured. So I thought, well, how would you do that? that guarantees the information on the grassroots would make it to the top when democracy is already supposed to be doing that. Like representational democracy is always it claims to do that, right? but it's not doing that. So what's missing? And I really do feel like the money is a problem. It gives too much power to some perspectives and not others. And some perspectives aren't helpful. Like some people just want to see the world burn. They're frustrated. They're angry. They want to vent. So it's like, well, how do you, <laughs> you have to heal that. So you don't want to exclude them. And they say there's that famous saying, it's like the people who are the most destructive are the people who are, need the most love. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? Instead of shunning them and treating them like criminals. Well, if you treat somebody like a criminal, they become a hardened criminal. You know, but if you treat a criminal like a human, the acidity rates go down and they start acting more like a human, a good compassionate person, which is rehabilitation. So I feel like in some ways, this, this new kind of app will have to do everything. It's like a societal reset where in order to hear all the perspectives, you have to heal a lot of trauma. I'll go ahead. Yeah. And well, and allow, okay. So there's, you know, Dunbar's numbers. Yep. Okay. So there is even in healing, um, people who I, I had a really traumatized uh, childhood, um, poverty, uh, like in a, a very, very mixed neighborhood. And that I attribute that to me being able to see and empathize with multiple perspectives, because I also have I have a cousin who's private jet rich. Um, wow. On the other hand, <laughs> and, <Victor's heart. laughs> and and so I, you know, I can I can actually empathize, believe it or not, with people like Elon Musk. And most of the people I'm around can't believe, like they they just don't have that perspective. So what I've seen is the importance of healing coming from your direct people who do, who most directly align with you, whether they're healthy or not, or able to pull ourselves uh, forward. Uh, have you heard of, of the one person brand, the creator economy that's going on now? What's this about? Tell me about it. Okay. So the whole, um, the whole thing is right now, um, 
you have the most opportunity in human history to get attention on you. And people have seen that there are universal patterns, there are universal tools to the way people work regardless of their perspective, right? Yeah. And so the thing that they have found that is work, that, that works is to solve a problem for themselves, productize that problem, and consistently, consistently show up and tell people about it on social media. And so that funnels them in, there's a whole funnel, there's a system and I did dynamic to it, it works. You funnel them in so that they can either, depending on the level of money they have available to access it, they can access either just the information itself through worksheets, they can access the next level of, su of support with uh, cohorts and courses. And then the, the biggest level of support, the most valuable thing is creators sell their actual time for $500 an hour and up, right? But they're, they're, they're only able to do that for their niche. If you bring in someone from another niche who sees things a bit differently, especially nobody from the disability community really, or the neurodivergent community is doing this. Um, if, if you bring in someone from another niche, especially from the disability community to these guys who are, who are like Andrew Humer been waking up at 5 AM going on a run, you can't sell that to someone with long COVID. <laughs> yes, <laughs> that's right. <laughs> it would be me. So, so that's, that's the, um, there's a, there's a big hole there here in, in, in the marginalized and the disability, disability community to create those things or to show people how to create those systems and funnels for themselves to systematize things and okay so there so there's that the one person brand thing i'm trying to take that essentially and make a community brand if you're interested in in hearing more about that dan ko k-o-e is really good he's like the one that was the most overlap for me um he sells courses on stuff how to do that so anyway take that but community brand is how you make it that is how you make it viral and global is to take these tools and sell them to others. And, and there are so many people working on tools. There's um, so someone I'm working with on the village marketplace right now is, is a uh, Lavra. I'm going to mess up his last name <laughs> all the time, but I'll like type it in later or whatever. Okay. <laughs> he's building, he's been building this app called Magnova. Wow. And it's, it's about the principle. He has a neuroscience background or I'm sorry, not he, they, um, they have an, a neuroscience background that, uh, and, and something I delved briefly into, um, is that people are just needs meeting machines that uh, operate largely on subconscious autopilot, right? Most of what we do is a subconscious strategy to get our needs met. And so what the app does is it, it looks at everything in a needs-based system. So why do people use Amazon? Because it meets their needs. Um, it's a whole marketing principle where people aren't buying the product itself. They're buying the need that it meets for them, which is a lot of times to be accepted and to be, uh, yeah, to, 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 it's, it's a form of connection, a lot of the stuff we buy, right? So anyway, with this app, it, uh, a very beta stage, but allows you to enter what your needs are and what your like strengths are, what your ability to help with. And the way I see it in its, in its, in its, when it's finished is you sort of, you get help from someone to enter yourself as a query, a huge inventory of needs and strengths. And when you enter it in yourself in this, in this app, it will, can automatically align you with someone who is similar across the values that are important to you and also geographically to where you sort of think of it as like a, a bunch of gears locking into place to where, to where your needs and strengths align in a more automated way. Because right now, just like the purpose of, the, of this session is we're, we're trying to find where, where we align to some extent, right? Um, just in conversation, we find where we align, where we can give help and get help. Um, but so Lavra's looking on, working on an automated to do, uh, tool for that. I mean, which I feel like is another element of the, like a, just a global tool that could be neutral and used for anyone, as long as it's not monetized by a specific group, if it's open source, right? Yeah, exactly. 
Uh, Jess, I wanted to, to I wanted to name that. Uh, so, the other week, uh, we host uh, the cafe hosted a uh, get together of uh, of you know um, solopreneurs, uh, business creators, creatives, in order to uh, to have like you know five minute um, flash presentations to share what they're about to the uh, to the group, and among those that joined was um, Bruce and uh, Tiffany from the slipstream.com. Mm -hmm. The slipstream.com uh, is, or the slipstream is about, is a, uh, um, well, what's the word? A causal infer it's an uh, AI based causal inference system. Uh, and the intention, if you, uh, I'll, I'll soon be posting the, uh, um, the recording of, of the event. Uh, so that you can hear from Bruce directly, but uh, like his his aim is for that system to be able to do that kind of matching that you described, right, in an automatic way by applying causal inference. Uh, so that those uh, so it's descent, uh, in, intending to be decentralized and, uh, and to accomplish. What's their name? Uh, the slipstream dot com. Oh, the slipstream. Dot com. Did you say their name was Bruce? Bruce, Bruce, and uh, Bruce. and Tiffany. I think they've got a uh, a link to their their Discord available there on the site. Um, I've uh, started to work with them in order to get the system installed and to start playing with it. But, uh, uh, yeah, they, it's fascinating. Very very cool. And uh, yeah. uh, um, Mark, uh, to me, a pattern matches kind of closely to uh, to what. Bobby sometimes refers to as like a global Bayesian brain project. Uh, yeah, so a little more fancy wordage. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So in so after the uh, the five minute flash presentations, we continued recording, and so you'll see a, a, a dialogue between um, Bobby and uh, and Bruce also. Yeah. Did you publish this? I am in the it, it, my. No, not yet. I recorded it, and so I'm in the process of like uh, of of okay. doing the, the the cleanup. But uh, it, it it I haven't automated or like um, the uh, that taking video and converting it into uh, to publishable. You don't have a like, system like, for yeah, yourself uh, or a process in place, exactly, right? Exactly. Yep. So I feel you. Kinda, yeah, it's manual. It takes some time. Uh, <laughs> yep. Uh, well, I'm very interested in this, and uh, I think we're all kind of doing the same kind of thing from different yeah. from different perspectives, like you said. And there's a universal in it, and that universal is the hard thing, and that's sort of maybe what this like the thing that we're we're working on is called New World Spirit. And it's supposed to be trying to bring in this universal to tie the particulars together, like you just said, right? So we're all kind of doing a version of that. Mm -hmm. Because we know we have to cooperate in some way to solve these existential problems that we're facing. If we don't cooperate in time, it's, it looks like it's over or it's going to be extremely painful. And it's like, okay, well, how do you do this coordination solving problem is exactly like what you were saying. You have to map out, you know, needs and you map out skill sets to meet those needs. And you provide, you know, one person brands or community brands, which is a way to sell it to each other. Mm -hmm. And if we do it right, the economy stays bal balanced and reciprocal. And Bruce, I'm not sure exactly if Bruce is using AI to to do the causal mapping between the needs and the the skill sets to make those links as efficacious as possible. Okay. That, yeah. Yeah. That's what a good AI should do, not what Uber is doing. Uber is doing the opposite. They're actually mapping out everything you need to lead you on a carrot stick to work <laughs> longer for less. It's the exact opposite. They're literally creating modern slavery and we proved it. We actually calculated the delivery numbers for, I think, three years. Mm -hmm. And even during the pandemic, when the tips went up by like 200 percent, like human beings are amazing. Like a ton of people had to like total sympathy for these delivery drivers. Like, wow, we don't even know what this virus is. It's killing people. Some people thought it was a plant. Some people don't. There's a lot of controversy. But one thing we know is I think how many people like six million people have died from it or something like this. Who knows if the numbers are all fudged, but it's not a fun mm. experience if you've ever had it. Um, I think that uh, Uber exploited the workers even more through the AI because the, the tips fed into the algorithm. And if you don't know the algorithm, you can't see that it's adjusting your kilometers and your time. Like it's adjusting all the other variables to absorb that extra money. 
So they're taking it, but they can say to the media, no, they're getting all their stuff. And it was yeah. so incredibly sophisticated. It gives you this feeling of hopelessness that like you can't outthink this thing. It's like playing chess with an infinitely intelligent being who's trying to hurt you the whole time. Mm -hmm. So we don't want the AI to do that kind of causal inferencing. So Bruce, I think, has a, a piece to play here yes. in the universal. So we're, I think we're converging because that's exactly where we ended up is we're in a sort of needs based sort of matching of skills to one more piece. And we found out somebody smarter than us was doing this already. And his name was, uh, his name was Mihai Zizek Mihai, I think his name is. Um, that sounds flow familiar. Flow. Yeah, he does the flow uh, ecology. So I don't know, Victor, gonna, if you've heard of it. I'm going to click. Uh, yeah, the, the guy Rian Doris was mentored under. Uh, Could be. So I, 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 I'm uh, surprised, Victor, you didn't use it to gamify everything here because he talks a lot about games. While I'm interested to learn more about it, I, I just um, opened the the message thing, which is in you know, the chat bubbles in the bottom right. Oh, there it is. And then if <laughs> I click nearby, then I can communicate directly with the two of you. I'm curious what if you type out the uh, the name there so that I can pick it up later. Also, I think like we're learning it um, as we're going. This is great. Yeah, yeah. So, um, I'll, I'll share like one of the uh, the projects that I have sort of. Uh, around the, the the cafe here is uh, what I is to take. Uh, I I haven't I don't have this running right now, but uh, um, I'm building an autom a, a, a a workflow or automation that will take the uh, audio um, well in snippets, so as to make mm -hmm. it possible to have like kind of real time visual visualization of uh, of the conversation as it unfolds. But one of the uh, use cases that I'm interested in is to uh, to say use um, AI to to listen, say for um, skills and abilities, resources. Like I, I had framed it as like asks, like if somebody has like an ask or a need or that mm -hmm. kind of thing, to be able to detect uh, to to kind of listen for that, or uh, if if someone has offers. Uh, that they might make to the community based on their resources and uh, and abilities, and to listen for that, and so as to create sort of automatically like um, profile pages of the people within the community, so that those so that when people come in and have these conversations, um, sort of as a byproduct, um, that, that set of, of asks and offers, uh, you know, might be available to the folks in the community. Um, Yes, because this, this visual platform is really kind of, I'm liking it already. It feels very fluid, right? We're being humans, but mm -hmm. we're also in this digital space. The chats are flowing very um, beautifully. And you do have the right guy, Jess. That is Mihai, however you say his last name, because <laughs> it's quite long. <laughs> I can't remember either. <laughs> <laughs> I tried once. I, that's enough. It's on video. Um, I have to practice a bit. And, and I was telling before you got in here, just I was telling to Victor, like how much, how simple this look, looks and how smooth it is, is actually a crazy amount of programming. Cause I've, I've done a bit of coding. I don't know if you're a coder. Done a bit. Kind of a bit. Yeah. This is actually a lot. It would take a long time to replicate this, even with the app that we're trying to create. But the question is, is it open source Victor? Or are you trying to patent this or what's the ownership structure and does it follow a cooperative mm -hmm. structure or will it? Well, okay. So, the gather platform like is not my thing. Like what I had done is to I found it um, because I joined a uh, uh, an online conference and it kind of played the role of like you know the hallway, say like in an, in in a uh, in an in person conference where the folks that could convene you know, then have the uh, the um, the sort of opportunity for chance encounters, right? Which is something that is often uh, like absent from online conferences where it's just zoom based and then you don't get to talk with anyone it's, you'd get to listen and then the zoom closes and then you're kind of out uh so i'd seen that i'm like oh that's really cool well i'd like to do that and then meet folks uh that like i'm interested in and maybe and try to grow like i don't know a uh, like a sense of community or at least at least my community because like what i want is a, a community of of people close to me that uh that i trust and that 
meet your um, needs. I, I collab <laughs> well, that I collaborate with, well, right? And I think yeah. everybody wants that. So, you know, to, to Jess's earlier point of, uh, of like creating a, uh, of like what the offer is, I think that's that's kind of it. I'm, I'm trying to, to create this as a, a brand that shows and learns, that learns and shows how you know, to create these, uh, these individual bespoke, you know, communities of uh, like purposeful, um, and mutually supportive communities. Um, so it's yeah, an accessibility so thing. This works for is. us, but it may not work for someone else. But a little birdie told me within a year to two, um, open source can take like this interaction and set it up like it's a Zoom meeting for someone who's in like your interface can be totally customized to you regardless of the platform, whether it's open source now or not. And I have a solution of the process of transitioning to open source, oh, even nice. even if this is a proprietary um, totally. investor owned platform. Yeah, I, uh, that's that's a great point. So to, to 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 close out on your question there, Mark, like I it's just what uh, was easy to use and to start with. Uh, I'm kind of trusting mm -hmm. that uh, like as cool. as tech uh, as, as things progress, that we'll find a solution that's uh, that's more trustworthy. Mm -hmm. uh, Oh, okay. Because then to tra to segue into that, I want to hear the answer to this this transition to cooperatives. Because I just had an investor message me last night hmm. and say they want to give us money. So we got two people wanting to give money now. But of course, as soon as you take the money, comes the influence in the culture. Hmm. So I'm like, okay, well, let's get this. I started setting ground rules, saying that okay, if we take your money, we have to know where it comes from. Everybody in the chain to see if there's exploitation, and there probably will be, because anybody who's making money right now in the global system is probably exploiting somebody. So we're not going to ignore you, but we have to make a transition. So if you, if we take your money, that's a guarantee you're going to transition to this new way of doing things where you don't lose your competitive edge, but you stay in flow state. Mm. And this is how they get their needs met while changing mm. and meeting other people's needs without lo losing the highest good and service that society is meant to provide. And the highest good and service in all cultures, all times, all human beings have been doing it forever. The one thing that is the ultimate good and service economically is flow state. Everybody wants it. Being in this chat right now is us getting the highest need we want, which is flow state. Mm. Cooperating, flow state. Cooperatives, flow state. Everything is just flow state in different forms. So that's why the me high stuff comes in here is that it's the ultimate way to not just reach the destination, which is need met, but the journey to the destination is also part of the need. And so I feel Great like point. transition, it's probably his point, but Anyway, I'll, I'll take the credit. Yeah. <laughs> Mihai really did map this out really thoroughly. So I feel like we're just applying it. And now that these funders are coming in, this question of how do you transition them is exactly what I feel like you might tell me the answer to, which is very synchronistic. So I would love to invite you to download as much as you possibly can into my brain. And hopefully, Victor, you're interested in this because this platform's not yours. I thought it was. Shoot. <laughs> uh, I, I, I don't think we have to worry about that at, at all. Like I, I take the money, honestly, <laughs> because he, here's the thing. Um, so the village, uh, I'll just show you how the village marketplace works. I uh, briefly explain how it works and then explain the transition part. Um, because once you have enough capital internally, you can transition transition. So right now, uh, we do not have the capital to build a completely custom platform. So we've got we've got people who manufacture so that we don't have to go to uh, <clears throat> to manufacturers where we don't know that they're neurodivergent or not. Right. We're not giving money to a big company. We don't know the money is going. So we have a few manufacturers that we know the money is going to them. This is supporting directly neurodivergent small build, small businesses. For the platform, we don't have a neurodivergent small business person who has a platform already. We don't have the money to build open source, so we use Shopify. And we use Shopify plugins because it's a really custom solution. And I don't know where that money's going either. 
But once we start marketing to to our community, because uh, there are creators and designers who create the products on the front end, they create them virtually. I don't know if you know about print on demand, but this is the primary model we're using is print on demand on the front end to create projects, products virtually that doesn't exist because I came into the sphere from eco-socialism, degrowth, Whoa. trying to save the planet sphere, right? So I think print on demand is like that is a huge pathway to degrowth while not actually telling people they they have to live in austerity that we don't have to we don't we don't have to make them we're not going to make everybody like recycle their stuff right but you can make it easier to access stuff that didn't use as many resources in getting made yeah um, in order to transition so print on demand is the the primary model but then okay so we got going and the marketplace has made a little bit of money, but we're still using these plugins that we viewed that that go the money goes towards Bill Gates or something. I, I, I don't know, whatever. Uh, hey, we can pay one of our neurodivergent folks to uh, to build the plugin that we not only use ourselves. Now we're not giving that money outside our community, but we're going to sell outside the community as an alternative to that, uh, you know, the capitalistic model plugin. And you can, you can apply that to everything. Like we can drop ship, we can drop ship uh, products from companies. We don't know if the money is going towards a good or ill, but as soon as we can drop ship the product instead, we've got, we got, we have um, sustainably made toasters <laughs> versus our, you know, black and Decker toaster that we were selling before. Now we have found a company that can do sustainable toasters. Well, then we're going to yeah. switch from the toaster that's bad for us in the environment to the one that's good. You just, you just start swapping out slowly as you go along mm. as you, as you build momentum. So yeah, that, uh, so to me that that seems really pragmatic because you're using the best of available tools understanding that that's, that's cool. that that's what is available to use but trying to use it for a purpose that's values aligned and progressively um like excluding or or uh in or progressively swapping right the uh the you know the the tools or the the software that uh that is sort of in network i guess developed uh and excluding those that are that are not so as to then like retain more of the uh the capital or resources in network right but the right like yeah so like i don't know progressive exclosure sort of like a, a kind of strategy i don't know um, Progressive exclosure. Yeah, y'all are throwing me so many new terms. I'm just. I'm, I'm, <laughs> y'all are you from Texas? I'm, 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 I made that up, but uh, it, it, it oh. like, it's a. Uh, uh, but that, yeah, it, it's it, it's the name that I would put on what your, on what that strategy might look like. So, like, if yeah, even then, one but, ethical but, company makes all these uh, open source tools accessible, why would you use if you are doing a similar thing with your company, why would you use anyone else's right. as soon as that was available? So I'll say, um, I asked if you were from Texas, but I thought eco-socialism, probably not from Texas. <laughs> uh, North, North Carolina. Okay. Yeah. Um, so this is another contradiction, right? Like between being in the system and being outside of it, that's another, you know, just like the local and global the whole world operates by this kind of universal logic. And I really feel like the real solution comes down to the our understanding our natures and how our natures progress through all the other le levels of society. So, you know, it goes from your inside yourself, a relationship with yourself. If it's not in this universal logic, you'll be out of control. You won't be free in your own head. Right. And then your impulses will take over and you're like a, you're like a flake. Your consciousness is a flag in the wind. And, and then you go a little bit higher to like law where you form contracts with one other person. You have like bilateral kind of contracts. And then that goes a little bit higher to like families and then in your family situation. Mm -hmm. And then it goes to civil society, which is like families of families, you know, and then you have like the state with the constitution. And if the, if the elements are like in the wrong logic, then everything else is fragmented. Mm -hmm. And then it like reflects that fragmentedness back and it kind of like starts to spiral, which is exactly what seems to be happening to us. 
So at some base level, we do have to design these systems from the foundation in this new way. So it's like outside the system, but then you have to interface with the system, the current one. And I think that's very wise. I think that's what you're saying. And that's why even for me, when I was describing, I was like, okay, yes, there's going to be corruption somewhere in your system, but we have to still use it. Like we still have to move somewhere or else we'll be totally gridlocked. So that's that's, that's okay. the key movement, action, making stuff. <laughs> <laughs> right and moving i 100 percent agree with you moving though without corrupting the the kind of the logic so it's like we're inviting it in but there's a stopping point where a certain part of yeah, so much crazy. influence makes it here and i think that there's a kind of agreement that we can get these guys to sign when they're donating or gifting or investing or whatever that first of all they don't get any equity so they don't get any stake in mm -hmm. the decision making because that's how you usurp it 100 percent so it's a co-op, so you can't even sell the equity because everybody owns the equity. That's the co-op protection. Yeah. And then the social enterprising. I don't know if you know much about social enterprise. Not a ton, no. I'll, 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 I'll love to hear anything you have to share about it. It's a kind of a fancier word, I guess, like Victor threw out there. <laughs> it's, uh, it's, um, it's like basically the contradiction between nonprofits and for-profits. That's another contradiction right there's 200 of these every conversation once you see this logic every conversation is just about options, oh, making options. social purpose company kind of except the social purpose company is usually a label more used with profit organizations that are doing social responsibility like the three like R's. a b corp sort of yeah. certification yeah it's b exactly yeah b corp is a little bit more corporate like it's a little bit left or a little bit like right of center towards for profits because you're not foundationally changing the ownership structure you're just making the ownership structure a little more fair. But the social enterprising is actually both of them 100% merged. And it's where it is like a cooperative. A cooperative is kind of like the closest thing we have where the ownership of the means of production is, is worked through by everybody. And that there's a meritocracy that's more universal that the people who are in each position do go there because of their abilities, but you don't get compensated more because your abilities are higher. So absolute production is the, is the, where the capitalist dream went wrong because now we know that we're in a 24 7 connected you know hyper productive culture you can work yourself to death you literally can work yourself to death and the people who are born with more privilege of course produce more but mm -hmm. why are we rewarding people who didn't choose to have that capacities they didn't do anything to deserve it why are they getting paid more when everybody's trying to access their highest potentials to gain flow state all equally and so somebody else's flow state, and this gets to the disability stuff, somebody else's flow state is different from the hyperproductive guy's flow state, but they're both working equally as hard in their capacities. So they should get rewarded for that, right? That's what they should get rewarded for because that's the best you can do. If you push past your best, you're going to burn out and then you're going to hurt society even more. So the American dream, all this kind of stuff, that, that was an approximation for flow state. And now we've reached the limit of it. And now we do have to do this universal design, which is what disability communities use in architecture when they're building a new building that incorporates diversity. So we call this universal logic that underlies universal design. Okay, I'm making the connection there, yeah. <laughs> so that's why I got excited when I heard the neurodivergent community. I'm like, oh yes, the second one is coming. Awesome, they get this, they get this. Um, so I feel like the threads are all connecting and when mm -hmm. we invite in this these sort of hegemonic structures, we have to preserve that integrity of that universal design. And it has to be based around flow and it has to be a social enterprise where it is not a for profit that's making non profit commitments and it's not a non profit that can't make profit and does little one offs. Because if you're a registered legal non profit, at least in Canada, you can only make ten thousand dollars in profit. Yeah. I'm like, what? Yeah. So technically, yeah, we have to basically be the super productive for profit. Well, we can make a lot of profit, but the legal structure is nonprofit where it forces you to use it ethically more than just social responsibility, but universal responsibility. And you have to give it back to the people as a universal dividend in your company that's proportional and paid equally across the abilities. And if you don't work up to your ability, then you don't get your full amount. So there is still an incentive to work to your ability. Incentive still still built in, which is, yeah, people still need motivators and it's going to be different on t depending on the person, but for those who are, yeah. Do, what, those, let me ask, is, is there, is the, the social enterprise an actual structure in Canada? As an actual term, but when I went to go incorporate under it, no, there is no legal structure yet. 
So we tried to force, I tried to find a, a charter lawyer to make the charters and start getting the legal structure going. Right. But Canada, everybody's behind this. This is like the one thing we need to do. And B Corp was one of the closest, but it's not the real thing. So yeah, we were looking for a lawyer to actually make this new kind of charter. And then we would incorporate, or at least if we had to go under for profit to make money, then this legal charter would force us to do the nonprofit stuff as sort of a cooperative. And the cooperative structure in Canada, I don't think you can go outside of Canada. I think it's like local based or something. Mm. So I felt restricted that way. We have to make a global cooperative. Yeah. So all these contradictions, there's always something missing, which is why we're in this mess. And it's we're taking it and putting it together in one organic comprehensive whole, which is more like ecological thinking. An environment has all the parts in a circle. So that's what we're trying to do here with this holistic. universal logic. Everything's holistic. Thing. And in terms of, I just want to like nip in the butt a little bit, another contradiction that just started here. Mm. And it's that the incentive structure can be done wrong. So when I say incentive, you, if you do the flow state stuff correctly, you don't actually need incentives because flow state is intrinsically enjoyable, mm -hmm. right? The incentives are only if somebody is going to embark or upon the free rider problem where like they're out of flow and then they just kind of like get lazy and they get lost and they don't make the effort. The incentives are to just to, it's almost like a, a placeholder almost. It's not the actual incentivizer anymore. It's just to prevent the free rider problem. And then when somebody is starting to get into that like non-flow state, instead of doing what current society does, which is like crush them in this like downward mm -hmm. vicious cycle. Yeah. Because like, we have virtuous economic cycles and we have vicious econo economic cycles. Once you get into this category, it's really hard to pull out. And then if you, if you get into welfare or, you know, like social, so, social help, it's subsistence living where it's extra hard to get out of that trap again, you know, and then people know it's a trap. So they're like, why even try? And you're stuck in there. So we want to make sure that the incentives aren't the focus, only flow state is the focus. And we have to measure that with that matching between what, what the needs are and what the skills are in these flow state games that Mihai already mapped out. And I think this community, when they come in here, Victor, if we had some kind of way to map out, like you said, like a profile of somebody and say, these are your skills and, but here's the challenges to meet these needs. It's actually this, the matching between the skill and the challenge level that produces the need meeting in the flow state. That's what Mihai says. So really, these are just games. And he says, every good game yes. that results in flow states, <laughs> we're like in an RPG right now. I noticed that, Victor. <laughs> um, I think uh, if we design games on his four criterion, then our chances of meeting those needs in flow state is maximized. So the first one is clear goals, uh, immediate feedback, challenge level matches the skill level, and then clear rules. And I think whatever we build here, Victor, whether we have to start it from scratch with integrity and take money from Microsoft or whatever and make sure they don't corrupt us with social enterprise, or there's some other way to do it. I feel like we're kind of thinking on the same path. So basically you're saying, just take the money and then I would pay you guys to make the software. Well, who, who makes the software is the question. <laughs> At this so point. what, what, so uh, what, maybe I'm lost here on the particular project you're taking the money for. What, what is the money to build? Do you, so you've incorporated as a for-profit. Not yet. No, we're still. Okay. It's very informal, and right? Is, we're, new world spirit that's what we're thinking of calling it yeah new world and spirit and this is tech this is a an application this is well the application is called wewa but we can totally change that name uh that was what the uber drivers want to name it as a union kind of thing uh and it was like you know with the pandemic essential workers was known all around the world right so it's like a trillion dollars of marketing already done for us you're an essential worker. everybody knows what that means Mm -hmm. um, so that's why he chose that. But the, the new world spirit is actually the name of the global societal structure. It's everything. Okay. And spirit is supposed to be, um, instead of new world order, which is happening, order is the, it's the bad way of this global community forming. It's like order means like rigid. It means like you're external to the order. You must obey the order. And this local listening gets erased. You have to listen to like the top. We mm -hmm. want to prevent that. Hierarchy. And the new world order is doing that. So we said, well, instead of the new world order, which is external, let's do the new world spirit, which is internal and self-determining. And it meets everybody where they are, including the disabled. So we think new world spirit is the most universal name that everybody can kind of get under. 
because it's secular, you know, team spirit, sports spirit, but it's also religious. It's like Holy Spirit, whatever you want to call it. <laughs> but <laughs> it also, it also, this is a little bit controversial, um, but it, this is the only place I could find this, this, this sort of contradictory development stuff. That's universal logic. It comes from this guy named Hegel. I don't know if you know Hegel. Victor, do you? It I, sounds familiar, but I have a goldfish brain um, <laughs> for various reasons we won't go into. But um, if you start talking about what Hegel said, I uh, it may come back. Well, usually when you know Hegel, you don't forget him. <laughs> uh, it's pretty brutal. He has a very controversial history because he's from the 1800s and he has some like sexist, racist kind of views that reflect the 1800s back then. But if you read his philosophy towards the end, which is extremely painful to do because he wrote in this kind of universal logic, weird way that ordinary, you have to be neurodivergent to kind of understand it. Okay. I think he was a savant. I think he was not diagnosed with it. He just was like a genius savant that totally thought off the charts. So he restructured all of reality and said, this is why all the racist and the sexist stuff happened in the past is because we didn't have universal logic properly. When you don't have a universal logic rationally, nature fights it out in this draconian kind of way where you fit in into your stereotypes. And that's what survival of the fittest was it's the animal kingdom, all that kind of stuff. And there is a certain ecological harmony to it. Uh -huh. But if you want to get outside of it, it's really brutal. So the negotiations are really it's like black and white. So what we're doing as we're sort of coming into this universal logic is we're recognizing how that kind of logic works so we can mediate that circle of reason between higher sentient beings. Because if we don't do that, we're going to break that ecological connection and destroy ourselves as we're trying to move between this freedom. We're more free than nature might be. And so this is what the LGBTQ is, that's the disabilities, this is where neurodivergence comes in. You don't fit the normal mold. So does that mean you get rejected? No, reason allows us to mediate that and, and change reality to fit people where they are. And I feel like this universal logic he provides allows you to take contradictions like opposite pairs and connect them together in harmonies that flow and then connect those to contradictions in this circle of contradictions. Is he at all connected to post-structuralism? Remind me. Uh, is... Well, no, no post-structuralism uh, sparked because of him probably. He is basically okay. the top of modernity okay. and then postmodernism kind of negated him for 250 years and okay. said, no, we got to get rid of all the structure. He's super structural and they like, oh, get rid of structure. Get and rid of Mick need to talk because we started working on metastructuralism. What's back this? In December. Do you keep mentioning like dialectics? That's a really interesting rabbit hole to go down. I won't take us down right now, but yeah interesting <laughs> i almost <laughs> feel like we need <laughs> because <laughs> yeah even metamodernism i don't know if you know what metamodernism is it no goldfish brain uh, wow meta it's... meta 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 structuralism sounds like it came right out of metamodernism there's a super hardcore group of guys and you know them right victor right bobby bobby's like in that community bobby zarian bobby and uh, we're getting the meta moderns to kind of go back to this 1800s and they're already kind of doing it, but the structure is missing. And so that's why even meta modernism is starting to split into the contradictions. Well, there's a, there's a, uh, have, have you, uh, so my, my thing I, I have the most language for is probably from a storytelling perspective, because everything is just, there's the same pattern in everything. And it's basically the bell curve, a point and a line. Um, right, uh, in, where was I going with this? Metamodernism, metastructuralism, <sighs> telling stories. No, my brain doesn't have it today. I have long COVID <laughs> on oh, top no. of, yeah, on top of, I, I get, the, Fry, Fry is my actual real last name. I got the nickname Friday because I will delve shallowly into many things. So it's easier for me to see in my brain construction the overlaps between where they're just the, where they're the same but it, the ability to articulate that has completely gone out the window also i do not have the specific language of e because i wasn't in them long i don't have the specific language for each of these groups and there's we've gotten so like stratified and highly individualized just in terms of the language 
just like you you can you can so tell someone from a low class background just because of the language they use subconsciously after just a few words and you know also a lot of reason why people are kept out of being successful in whatever business or industry but anyway so just a heads up on that but i'll have to I'll have to re-delve into these things and also tell, also talk with Mick because this is, there are so many, a year ago, I set out to find the people for this picture in my head. <laughs> <laughs> yes. but I finally put things together when I found the POD model and I was met with people who wanted to only educate and not do, who didn't get it on a level that, that, that you and Victor do and the people you're talking about, Bobby, and the people who are building these apps that understand even the moneyless society who I mo mostly align with. I tried to get in and talk with their group, but their mo money is bad. We can't use it at all. Mm. Uh, we're, so we're over that hump already, aren't we? <laughs> thank you. Thank you for being over the hump. <laughs> I appreciate that. Just so, as an aside, um, Jess, like uh, I, I, I too like have uh, have gone broad but kind of shallow, and find myself like often trying to uh, give voice to like intuitions or learnings that have that have come that that have like synthesized like out of like exposure to different topics, and often struggle to do it, and so I choose to instead to like um, to articulate you know the insight. Uh, as connected to like a personal story or something like that so right totally on board right. with that approach and yeah, that's welcome here in this house we we, we don't need to talk good <laughs> <laughs> that sounds sounds good to me appreciate right. the the less the less shame and guilt <laughs> I mean, that's what makes a community safe, right? I, if you can be your, it's authenticity and your, your freedom to connect or disconnect at the level uh, to which you are able to, able to, I, pre I very much appreciate that. It says the um, guy, it says the guy who made up an expression earlier today that blew our minds. What was it you said? Progressive oh, exclusion. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> That's talking good. Stop that. <laughs> um, but it's but it's okay. Uh, but I but I feel safe in this environment to say. Can you explain that? <laughs> what do you mean by that? And that's okay. key. I feel safe that you're saying it's safe because you're getting meta about it. And I'm. I agree. Like we need to talk about what makes safety when you're different, and to ask questions that where all your social credibility won't get erased, and then you're excluded. I just really appreciate what you just said. That's actually exactly what happens. And there's another side of this economic thing. We're doing something a little bit controversial again to try and solve that problem. And it comes down to privileges. And like, you know, like you said, it's subconscious. Like when you're around certain language, you absorb that on a very base level and then you emanate from there. And if you get stressed, you really, you can mask it if you can like learn above it. But if you get stressed, you go back to your base, right? So you get revealed. Yeah, like Dan Rather and his Texas accent coming out on the news that time when he got excited. You know about oh, that? Oh, is that the guy that lost his presidential campaign from like doing the yeehaw thing or something? No, it was in a in the states an international weather guy but anyway i i, I see what yeah yeah i <laughs> my southern accent comes out when i'm drunk <laughs> <laughs> i like southern accents <laughs> why be authentic let it out full blast i lived half my life in the midwest too so it Oh, it, it, okay, it, it, it it's natural for it to sort of match whomever i'm talking to Okay. Well, maybe if we stress you out, you'll go to the other side. <laughs> I will. <laughs> um, I guess what I'll, I'll say is I'll pick up what you said about the storytelling and this sort of like fixing that privilege. And we have to basically play a game, I think. And this new world spirit, we have to somehow figure out the social enterprising model to make money good or whatever we're going to use for the accounting. It's just accounting, right? With the qualia of reality. And I would say that you're the way you talk is a generalist and same with Victor, you're using the label, you're generalist, but you're not neo generalist and neo generalists are people that can be general and specific. And then you've got the, just the specialists, which are like the individualist sort of siloed thinkers. So generalists are connectors. You can see just enough to say, you can see the high level connections and you bring the right people together so that the, the, the siloedness doesn't result in abstractions with technologies that will kill us because we mm -hmm. lose the wisdom of the generalists. So you're right. We need that generalist stuff to come into play. And um, 
if you want to get more in depth, the neo journalist is kind of hard because you do need to get deeper into each one of those places. And that's kind of what I did, but that was just because I, I spent so much time in each community. And I don't think we have that much time to do that again with a lot of people. So the journalists are going to play a lot of a really important role. And then every once in a while, somebody like me will come in and say, okay, we can do this thing. But if I lose the generalist, right, then we have to get a general generalist to replace me while we're doing the special work. And if somebody comes out of the specialist and goes to the generalist, we need somebody to go back into the specialist role. So even those roles can shift because mm -hmm. sometimes you might want to go deep into something. You know what I'm saying? So all this kind of stuff has to flow. And I think the narrative behind who we are and like what roles we identify with um, can also shift because we are contradictions moving. Like you change. If you're, if you're somewhere long enough, you go to the opposite side, no matter what, like it's just a thing. And so we got to embrace that and make people feel authentic when they switch who they are, sometimes to the exact opposite side and not feel like they're losing their integrity mm. uh, or being hypocritical. Right. So I feel, feel, I feel like that's part of the universal logic stuff again. Mm -hmm. And um, in some ways we're launching a new education paradigm with yeah. the rest of the new world, like the whole societal structure, that's education, law, politics, business. We just talked about all of it has to basically shift to align the contradictions in this structure where this Hegel guy says there's like 200 base ones. All of society from bottom to top is 200 contradictions that connect and flow into each other. And we're all embodying that in some way. But really, we need to play a game. We need to make it a game to transcend those contradictions. <laughs> I, so the, if funny you should say game because I started writing out all these, basically these universal laws as I saw them in business, what marketing really is about needs meeting and the, the overlay. I, I, I framed it as a video game strategy guide called Saving the World Strategy Guide that's being Whoa. drafted in my coda. <laughs> I wanna read it. <laughs> it's just a massive stack of notes <laughs> right now. I can't wait. I wonder if we can, are you going to use AI to compile it into one story or are you going to do it the hard way? I'm, I'm, I don't, I don't know how to use AI effective. It's really frustrating because it, it oh. feels like it, it, it's constantly coming back to hierarchical thinking. And I have enough trouble getting myself out of that perspective mm -hmm. to begin with. So it's really frustrating when I try to get it to, to reword or to, to, to summarize a concept and it's just, it's off base. Yes. Uh, sure. okay. Sorry. I was like, I'm like, I'm no, leading my, this. <laughs> my, <laughs> you my, raised my, your hand and my school mode teacher mode kicked in. <laughs> my, uh, uh, my offer would be to help you, uh, like to use tools to, to transcribe from the, uh, written word into, uh, like digital text and to uh um to process that in a way that oh. uh, that uh, that i think we can do this so like um what you just described to me is that it's all there and that it's a challenge to to take it from there into like the next form and from the next form into like a a writing project. or even it's all up here mm -hmm. but i don't know how to organize it to make it accessible at a very base or more universal level like that um, word universal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, okay. I, I do too. And I, I've, I've, so I've constantly been thinking, especially over the past six months, well, I can build my own personal brand, but that's my perspective. So in a, in, in, and, 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 and Victor, I really feel like the, where this is where we aligned is making processes to get it out there. But, but for me specifically is to share multiple perspectives in in one in one sort of in one sort of framework like some there's got to be some way to to remove and make more universal a a brand or a message like i started out with we have a dream what if everybody we we said you okay you take and you write the we have a dream speech for your community for your brand what would it say and and everybody you know be able to we have all these different versions of it so that people could see and empathize with multiple perspectives. I got to pick up on that. That's a synchronicity right there. I don't know if I, you should, I've been talking a lot. So Victor, do you want to say something in response yeah. to that? Uh, 
a few things. So one is um, that like uh, I struggle to write. Uh, to, uh, I so my focus is on like automating the process of turning uh, like raw raw content such as this right into um, you know AI, probably AI generated uh, text and I um, I've gotten limited results from uh, from OpenAI uh, so far but. I've come across this guy named Saul that I had uh, invited to join our conversation, but he's uh, he's a bit shy. Uh, so he, he, I don't. So Jess, you're on Twitter. Um, Mark, do you use Twitter at all? I am on there actually. I got a new account, so it's got oh, one dude. follower. Oh, <laughs> dude! I got. I, 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 I. It'll have two as soon as you share. It. Like maybe drop the uh, your handle in the uh, the the meet. But I, I got I got a like um, like share uh, this guy's profile today he was uh, like in he hegelian mode and i think you'll appreciate uh, like some oh, of his, uh, his, uh, his stuff but so he he's uses like ai and has like tuned it uh as soon as you see his, his profile and, and see like uh, maybe go through some of his um his posts you'll you'll see it but it's amazing just absolutely amazing i'd love to get his help to uh um to achieve something more aligned with my voice and aesthetic uh, uh, as a, but like in a, an AI generated kind of mode. Um, so like all this to say, I'm working to create an, uh, I'm, I'm trying to solve my problem by like automating it so that like it takes less time, but produces adequate quality. And then I, once mm -hmm. that happens, I can then work on, on uh, tuning it and improving or no, modifying the, uh, the quality but the point is to to get the uh, the insights and uh, you know, the beauty of the the of the discourse uh, the the dialogue like out there and uh, and available um, and uh, my insight uh, from just the other the other day I was in a um, uh, a, a mini case uh, you know very familiar with the like like there's different modalities for uh, for casework uh, where you present. A case and receive help from from others and in this uh this recent session like it became clear to me that like my fastest path to you know, gaining some kind of revenue to begin extending my uh my financial run uh roadmap runway is probably to use substack uh and so what my aim now is to uh to automate the pipeline of of creating uh something that would be publishable uh, as like substack articles for the uh for the community here. Um, so uh, all this to say, uh, like when it comes to like a specific offer, then like I think I could probably apply that to um, the, uh, you know, your, uh, your strategy notes. Um, the challenge would simply be to, uh, to help you set up a tool that makes it easy and uh, high quality to screenshot your notes and that that converts it into a like digital format and i've found it there's, that would there's be a really amazing. great really great tool for that um i think it costs like 30 bucks but it's, it's what what's it called it's uh, cam scanner i think cam scanner yeah 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 that's it i think i used uh, to own that when i had money in a business yeah oh <laughs> it's it's uh like I used it ages ago, and I, I was like, ah, I don't really feel safe like having so much of my notes in this thing. Um, but they, uh, and I've kind of gotten over that, and uh, it's it's it works amazing, amazing for like uh, just taking screenshots and doing optical character recognition and turning it into a digital format. So I don't know yeah. about my handwriting. <laughs> I think it's you can try. <laughs> it has its work cut out for it. <laughs> May, may may take some uh, some like you know manual worth, manual intervention in the uh in, it's worth in the a try output. yeah try it's it worth definitely definitely worth a try uh, most of it probably that pile i held up earlier there's another pile that's already been scanned in but uh, you know is lost in my 2013 sort folder <laughs> well so just to affirm, yeah, so that, like uh, I'd, I'd love to work on that with you and uh, that'd be great. 
I'm already doing something that's similar. So the project is like aligned with what I'm already doing. So yeah, we're, we're, we're sort of both, uh, yeah, trying to produce your, I, I think your main focus is the long form content like this, just the organic live, whatever comes out of the conversation, which I tried to use um, Opus AI on a podcast results mixed results um but uh but that's that's definitely uh, um definitely something to just check out <laughs> if you hadn't played with it before i think it can grab the occasional gold nugget um what i did this morning was i just picked uh i just picked a thing like the you know like the 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 fact that people um, are consciously you they're on subconsciously always just trying to get a need met right picked a thing I said okay I'm just going to talk about this and record it and I went off a little bit on a short form video and now I have stuff on the on the hard drive to edit actually then I went off on another thing about briefly explaining the circular business model so now I have these clips that I just have to stitch together on the hard drive. So now I just have to have a system for myself for every day going in and doing at least, putting at least one of these together. So one topic, edit one video, right? If, if you hear of any easier ways to put put videos together rather than pulling them apart, I'm, I'm, I'm all ears, <laughs> as they say. Yeah, that's, uh, well, okay. Yeah, what's because coming the, up is like the, so. So there's a um, as an art as a byproduct of this uh, this this um, workflow. Uh, well, so the cool thing about once you have a workflow is that you can like tack things onto it. So one of the uh, the aims, uh, one of my aims, is to to have like a few different workflows off of this, and that one would be to take the you know. One will dump the raw transcript. Another will like process it into something that's like a personal profile and have uh, like documents associated with personal profiles. Another might be for, you know, capturing project information and so have like project pages and maybe an integration with like uh, project management um, software so is that it's possible to take conversation and then like automatically like at least create. Um, yeah. you know, minimum viable project shit. Uh, and then and once you've got might, it. Yeah, yeah. So so the, you'll the document and sell it. Well, uh, it may be able to turn it into a product indeed. Uh, but in the short term, it's just like a service that will be attached to, to the uh, um, to the the uh, the cafe space. Uh, but okay. the, the, the importantly, so what you had just said was like, yeah, but then you're going to have many of these over time and you might want to find interrelationships, you know, between content within different, uh, within different conversations. Uh, so like that I think is going to require something like an indexing system or like a, maybe mm -hmm. an integration with a, a search tool like um, Elasticsearch or, or whatever. But, uh, but like, yeah, so boy, I've got a lot of project work ahead of me here. <laughs> But, well, I was going to add oh, one more. Yeah, go for it. Yeah, please do. Like the game it, it bit is, is this... like is like something that I'm I'm really interesting in. But go ahead. Well, it also gets back to the story stuff you were mentioning, Jess. Um, so I, when you were talking, it kind of like clicked in my head. I'm like, oh, like this. It kind of clicked up for me that this platform is kind of perfect for the game, right? Mm. Obviously, it's a game, but. Um, the education system part, like training to look, to think in this nonlinear way. And like you mm -hmm. said, Jess, you don't like this hierarchy, but it's another contradiction, hierarchies and non-hierarchies. So th there's gotta be a bit of both in order for it to be universal. But the way we're doing hierarchy right now is the dead way, which is extremely painful and leading to this wealth concentration and absolute reward. You're born with better talents, you're worth more, you get paid more. You're disabled, well, you're gonna get subsistence living and if you die, okay, well, we did, we, we did what we could. That needs to end with this universal design based on universal logic, but we have to get people to understand that. How do you teach this nonlinear way of thinking? How do you teach somebody to be neurodivergent almost? Mm -hmm. You know, people are born that way. You're a savant, you're not a savant. You know, you're an Einstein, you're, you're not. But I feel like this new way of logic, it is a hierarchy of those contradictions where like the most abstract ones are on the bottom, the simplest ones are on the bottom. 
and then they grow into each other, not in a linear hierarchy. They're, they grow transcendentally, so the complexity increases, but then the complexity circles back around the simplicity again. So the circle business thing. Yes. <laughs> it's That's basically it enlightenment. Yeah. Uh, so we found a way to teach what Buddha was saying, what Jesus was saying, what Prophet Muhammad was saying. We found a way to teach that it. scientific. What is it? <laughs> I have a meme for it. It shows someone on a what's what societally perceived as a universally low level of consciousness that's kind of just sitting there enjoying the weather, looking at a bee. And then it, it, it there's the bell curve. And the person at the very in the middle of the bell curve is frantically trying to prove their value to society or doing all these errands or something that looks awful. They're thinking really complex thoughts. And then at the other, the final end of the bell curve, there's a, a guy sat in a lotus position who's just enjoying <laughs> the weather like the person <laughs> societally perceived as at a lower level of consciousness. <laughs> He's back to the same state. You just reminded me of that. That's exactly what it's like. Wisdom is simpler than the machinations that we currently have. And so I thought, well, how do you go from complex to simple without losing the efficaciousness? Like when he said the degrowth, right? Um, really what degrowth means, if we're going to do it wisely, is we have to have growth and degrowth at the same time. Another contradiction. Well, there's a word for that. If you do more with less, right, you're growing less in the bad way, but you're growing more in the good way. That's called ephemeralization, which is what Buckminster Fuller called the Bucky, you know. Fuller. <laughs> yeah, he calls that process. We need to ephemeralize. Oh, awesome. Thank you for the recommendation. I'll check him out. I just debated a Hegelian uh, two days ago. So I need to get in touch with him to teach him the right way to do these contradictions. Because even in our conversation now, you can see all I'm doing is recognizing where the contradictions are and making them both happen, mm -hmm. but in the right way. And we're just going to do that 200 times with this game. Mm. And so the game is called the sentence game. And it's on something called the universal story of being. So this is the thing where you said, like, if you want to write, I have a dream poem, right? Everybody puts it in their language or their conceptual framework or their skills. It's the art in the meaning, mm -hmm. but the meaning stays the same because mm -hmm. the meaning is the universal, the essence that connects the message to everyone or everybody can identify with it. So it's the sameness in the difference. So you have another contradiction, unity and difference. They're both happening simultaneously, right? So this universal story of being provides like a sort of like story, like a storyboard or a story arc that everyone has in their lives. And at first it doesn't sound like that's possible. Everybody's different, but no, this is the logic of how consciousness works when it's in that lotus position kind of enlightenment. You see all the contradictions in harmony. And not only that, but the, con the, con the contradictions between the contradictions are also in harmony. That's the hierarchy that goes around and circles back on itself. So the top becomes the bottom, bottom, bottom becomes the top because mm -hmm. that's another contradiction. <laughs> so they, they come back around. It, it's, you start getting this to this awesome continuousness where the whole world is in, in the right place. And, you know, you can be anything as long as it's in the right way. Uh, so we have to teach people how to, to learn this nonlinear kind of circular thinking. And I think you're right. People can't, we have to meet them where they are, right? Like we take the story to them and they put it in the form that they want. Right. And then we just sort of like try and create a mega universal form where we, we take little bits from everybody, kind of like the United Nations, except we thread it in one story. We take a sentence. I should explain the game. We bring in That'd teams of around. Yeah, I should probably start at the beginning. <laughs> okay. Why don't we start at the end and work our way back? That's a contradiction. This should work. I'll, I'll put it together. It's it's a, it's a kind of a rule of, of, of storytelling that give the audience one plus one. Don't give them the two. Yeah, I'll start simple. We'll do the universal logic, simple first and then more complex. But I guess really the, the game is called the sentence game with the universal story of being. And it starts with teams of about eight people. We get people to come in, teams of eight, and they have six Pareto categories, we call them six universal categories of privilege. And they're really controversial, they're taboo, you're not even supposed to talk about them because that's the thing we turn our blind eye to because there's nothing you can do about them. So once you're paid with them, you can't get out of the stereotypes. So I think when people come in here, we have to make some kind of profile, like you said, Victor, exactly like, I don't know how to do that with this platform, but what clicked in my head was that this platform is perfect because we have to play the game with videos. And it's so smooth. Like even right now, I'm enjoying it. This is better than Zoom, better than anything. 
and we were looking for a platform like this and my but the thoughts are too separate that i didn't put them together and and then when you were talking, Jess, you said story, being on the platform and remembering all this other stuff I'm about to tell you with the story, it came together. And now, oh, I got the epiphany. I think it's supposed to happen here, Victor. And you're supposed to be one of the mediators of connecting people in that general way, which is what you said you wanted to do. Mm-hmm. So we need a lot. Of, we need 200 of those people, basically, um, because this universal story of being has 200 sections of the story. Holy shit. There's the there's a number on it, just like Dunbar's number. Yeah, it's around that got range. It from Hegel. <laughs> okay. It yeah, is. Hegel, Hegel did something right. Some of the race, the other stuff. I don't know if we should take that, but the the logic is like I've never seen anything in my life like this. It does form something that is universal in some way. It's working already. When I talk to anybody, it's working with everybody. It's bringing that meaning together, even though our projects are different. And I really feel like if we get people to learn to think this way in the purity of the essence of it, then no matter what the art is, the, the, the taste, the touch, the color, the platform, the zoom, whatever it is, we can still work together no matter what our contradictions are. And, um, uh, oh, wow. I need to, I need to get Mick in this conversation because he invented something called narrative calculus. Oh, whoa! The that sounds right. Stories, which Ooh. is how we got to the meta structuralism because he was looking at like the external uh like the external almost limits and i was looking at the internal drivers like there's a drive like there's all there's a there's also a and maybe you have a different overlap for this but there's this thing in in teams where if you have three of these your team is good but if you have four your team is great it's framed as the the, you'll see videos on youtube about the lion cheetah fox bear uh yeah yeah the roles of the teams yeah so there yeah so to have those team roles but it's 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 um so thinking in terms of like a bottom driver and an external uh, limit before the next level of consciousness, I'm not a, I'm not articulating this great, but you you have a structure and a framework here, and it's made me really excited for it, and also for you to talk to Mick because if you are, I saw what he was doing could turn into what basically what narrative calculus does is it 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 lets i look at the internal structure of stories and therefore be able to it's deeper than this okay but it's basically able to take star wars but and take that same story but make it my little pony so that (laughs) that you know somebody you know you know how people neurodivergent people we get really obsessed with our uh, special interests so if you could take something that or or a something that people would empathize with in a star wars story but translate it it's like a translator basically to a story and a that someone can empathize with and obviously you would take two very different you would take like i don't know i don't do the romance things but some romance novel for <laughs> the star wars to get them on the same page if you could then take that into the metaverse say and get people to interact with it in a game that understood their needs and resources but putting it put it in a frame with the correct responses to to just uh, to get empathy to get empathy out of them and to shift their perspectives like you could this is this is i called it an empathy engine but i feel like this is the same thing but it is in in a way but it is actually a framework that we can put into play now with actual people by so so would you take this game and then publicize it as it's happening yep to get other people to see that well those who could were able to see the structure and then organically form the sort of materials and work and that's right the structure has the opposite spontaneity another contradiction right (laughs) we have to do both of them (laughs) see it's just the same thing you just have to figure out how to put them in the right order because if you put them in the wrong order then you get the worst possible combination um but yeah we have to spontaneously organize teams in a structure where the structure is universal in all the particulars so all the opposites are starting to happen and it's all needs meeting you're meeting the flow state needs but you're also meeting the material needs. Uh, well, that's part of the connection. You're meeting material and ephemeral needs. So that's why when we build the teams, we do have a structure there too, where there's these six categories that have this sort of universal value. And 
the met is with that, that? I'm sorry. I'm curious what the six categories are. They're very taboo and controversial, so you're not supposed to mention them, but I'm going to do that here because we have Please. to start talking about this. I don't get we... offended, so. <laughs> <laughs> okay, good. I was going to say, too, you're, you're, you're speaking quickly. You're almost a little bit labored because I think we're sort of the same. That ordinary conversation is like really restricted, so you have to rush everything you say because if, if you don't get it, you know, I feel like you're being pushed all the time. And I'm like, no, you got some, at least with me, I don't get bored very easily. So you, you need to take a breath, even a minute to think we can get out of this, you know, you know, rat race kind of mentality and get to that Lotus a little bit like, okay, let's crack a joke once in a while. It's okay. Well, the world is kind of ending. So there is some urgency, but we can kind of mediate that contradiction yeah. a little bit. Thank you. Um, okay. So these Pareto categories, this is on video too. So <laughs> Oh no! Be careful who you show it to. <laughs> no, I think it's gonna be okay. I think we're ready for it. Um, I think we got enough safety, the right people with the right universal consciousness, that empathy engine. I think that we have enough of that to pull this off. Because empathy is what transcends these six categories, and this these universals are actually uh, the empathy engine. When you think them logically, they're also intuitive because they're imminent in you already as that meta structure that Mike Mika, his name is Micah. What did you say his name was? Mick? The the narrative calculus guy? Thank you. Oh, Mick. Just Mick. Mick, uh, Mick oh. McCullough, but everybody calls him Mick. Mick. Okay. Mick is, he's, I think he's repeating. He's so smart that he's repeating the Hegel stuff. People with like super high intelligence, they start to map out those universal limits. Like Forrest Landry in the meta modern community is like the top dog that Daniel Smothenberg and these guys go to. Mm -hmm. I looked at his work. Yeah. So close to Hegel. Like they're just, when you, you all, kind of, they all kind of converge on that essence, but they don't know exactly how, cause it's so deep. It's actually infinite. Um, I don't know how Hegel did it, but he got the first rung. It's not done, but it's enough to pull us together. These super geniuses. So this, these six categories need empathy or else you trap people in them. And then you subconsciously reward them. Absolutely. It's something that you're not aware of unless you know the meta structure. So I thought, let's just make them explicit, which is exactly what the sick society is not doing. They're trying to hide it, but they happen anyway. So you can't protect anyone. And you get these virtuous and vicious economic cycles where the wealth always goes to the top. Even if you redistribute it, goes to the top, redistribute it, goes to the top. And it's because of these six categories. First one is beauty. Physical facial beauty is something that you can't really choose at birth. It's a gift. It's a whatever you want to call it. And there's billions, hundreds of billions of dollars as an industry worldwide in that. And it's called modeling. It's called advertising. It's all that stuff. Makeup. Cosmetics. Yeah. yeah. And it's superficial to judge somebody on that. But society does anyway. Okay. Number two is we have to deal with where you're, what social networks you're born into. So if you're born into high, you know, noble, you know, the monarch or whatever, or into political families and your, you know, senators and all this, it's nepotism. But basically, um, you can be born very high, or very low, and that's not your choice. You're not choosing where you're being born into. And that opens a lot of doors for you. Then number three, or closes doors for you. Um, number three is just financial wealth, wealth in general, born into rich families or poor families. The, the networking and the social kind of go hand in hand. But sometimes you can get a poor family that just has a huge, huge network. So they're actually rich in the poor part of society. So that's why we separate them. And then the, the fourth one is body appeal and sex privilege. So this is sort of like our porn stars and all this, your athletes and all this kind of stuff. Fast twitch fiber, you don't choose any of that stuff. Yeah, you can exercise and kind of get close to it, but some people just have natural golden ratio in their bodies and all this. Yeah. So the, the facial beauty and the physical beauty together form your full package, but you don't choose that. And then number four, you have to choose it meta genetically, but usually it's genetic. And then the fifth one is culturedness. So the opportunities that you have to be exposed to diversity, a wealth of sports, a wealth of hobbies, a wealth of stories makes you more likable and your humor goes up and you're, you're just, you go to festivals more, you're, you're that likable person. And then number six is intelligence, just raw, sheer horsepower IQ. And IQ is also a highly genetic. It's inherited, inherited. And I think if you train your brain, you can get a 5% increase over your lifetime or something. Which is nothing. <laughs> yeah, basically nothing. So it's very structured. So those categories are very hard to change over your lifetime. And if you're lucky, you can change your social. If you have a, a, a lucky break, you can maybe change one of them. 
um, drastically, but they really determine how, how this sick society treats you. Like that's, that's like 80% or something huge. And you get rewarded off of those. If you got a 10 out of 10 in the beauty or what you get rated off your numbers. And we want to create a different kind of economic game where we know the numbers, but the numbers don't dictate the rewards anymore. It's an internal game. It's a game that's whatever your potential is. If you play to your potential, you win the game. Even though you might not absolutely win it, you don't get rewarded off of that. You get rewarded off the flow state you get from playing at your the essence level of where you belong in society because you are essential. It's like an organism. You know, if you remove the kidney, you still die. If you remove, you know, the heart, you die. If you remove any organ, because they're all essential, you die. So we need that to be returned in this inner game. And you can't get there if this superficial game is dominating everything. Doesn't mean you suppress these people. The 10 out of 10 beauty, the 10 out of 10 IQ, those people still like do awesome because they're still playing their game and being the best that they could be. So that's why it's a Pareto category is that Pareto is an economist that says you don't need to bring the down the, the top down to bring the bottom up. You can let everybody be amazing and then everybody sort of rises up in that equality of or equity of flow state. And the economy will match that. You just get paid that dividend from that social uh, social enterprise structure. Whatever we produce as a whole globally gets fed to everybody in their flow states. So the, the, the CEO that has a 160 IQ that can run five companies might be in flow state at five companies. He's like, if I do any less, I'll get bored. But if you have somebody who has like a disabled, you know, they're disabled, they have maybe 85 IQ and they have to work, they work at Walmart or something. They still get paid. This, if they go to Walmart and they be that 85 IQ to their max, that's the best they could do. They get paid the same as that, that, that super CEO. And we help them. Like maybe they need ways to spend that extra money. Like there will be some, some help at every level, but that's the, that's the reward system. That's not absolute. That's the one that rewards you for being human and doing the best you can, which is sort of like in sports E for effort, but in some ways it's not exactly that. That's like an empty sort of, you, you do have to work to your level, right? You do have to perform to your level because once you're in flow state, there's something contradictory that happens is that when you hit that flow, your productivity goes up 700%. So you're more competitive than a capitalist. See, that's why a social enterprise structure, while treating everybody like humans and investing in the humans can actually outperform a capitalist organization that's racing to the bottom and exploiting everybody. And it's because only 20% of their workforce is actually in flow. The 80% is dragging. So there's a huge way to, to leverage this and win all the contradictions. That, 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 that solves the scaling problem. Yes, that, exactly. That solves a huge scaling problem. Wow. Okay. Because maybe we don't actually have to break down at scale. Ah, that's... Uh, okay. Well, to do the flow states, we have to do that immediate feedback game stuff at the grassroots where everybody's learning at their, like the way they need to learn because we're yeah. doing that Martin Luther King speech thing with this universal story being, we're doing that a million times over and we need to do it in little pockets of eight. To be honest, it's super customized. You can do it in teams of one, two, three, four, however size, the, how big the team you want. But we're with these Pareto categories, it seems like around eight should be a good experimental start around six to eight. Cause you got enough diversity to make an interesting story, like an interesting art piece. Um, but it's not so big that you lose it in confusion. So that contradiction. Right. And it has answer. to have, uh, like there seems to be a there, there with three, uh, with four people or, or sets of four because the oh yeah the meta calculus or the narrative calculus yeah it's in, i don't know how to articulate it but there's it's it's the lion cheetah bear fox whatever's the there there and there actually that was uh what got me thinking about the story a bit more was that those four things are not necessarily the participants in the game those are the people who moderate the game so that would be a victor so victor would be you need four at least four minimum roles to have high performance team but the team itself will be in some of these modes, right? But you need at least mm -hmm. the, the moderators to be in those modes to keep the com the energies balanced in the conversation as right. people are trying to figure out where they are in these contradictions. That part I 100% agree with. Um, but we don't want to make sure, we don't want to restrict the participants too much because then the spontaneity mm -hmm. starts to die. And right. we're going to be rotating these. So when somebody comes in to create a team, they get to pick the teams. Hold on a second. Um, my computer is about to freeze. Hold on. Oh, no. uh, and we're getting to the top of the hour. He was right. 
computer was about to do. <laughs> it's frozen. <laughs> it's frozen. It's okay. Perhaps looks he's, like he's uh, lost signal. He was um, also saying that he's near the top of the hour, so perhaps he will, uh, like, uh, yes. his, this thing will, will fix and he will rejoin. Ah, I can see him reconnecting. Maybe. Wow. Jess, I am so glad that you came in. Uh, are you able to hear me? Yeah, I can, I can hear you. I was just, I was only frozen in body, but not in computer. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Uh, yeah, your your presence like completely shifted like the the course of the conversation. I, mean, I've, I've loved I it, felt so like I interrupted. You. What were you were you y'all just doing co working or? No, um, I met Mark through um, Bob Biazarian's, uh group, and he and I hadn't had a uh, a one on one connection just yet. So we'd set up the meeting in order to do that, but like. Uh, as a result of you joining, it wasn't one-on-one, -on -one, and instead, I think, turned into something that was much like much richer. So I, I appreciate you like uh, okay. coming in and adding to it. Uh, yeah. Well, and... I don't feel like such an intruder now. Um... <laughs> Not at all. Not at all. <laughs> Bob Bob Viasarian. Bobby Azarian. Yeah, he wrote the book uh, was... "The Romance: The Romance of Reality." Uh, the Romance of Reality. I need. I've got some homework to do. But uh, I wonder. Mm -hmm. I wonder, like, 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 Mark is the first person I've encountered who certain things just already brought to the table that I've been looking for in other people for like a year, right? Um, so, what that that. You found him through Bob Viasarian. I'm trying. I'm trying to like. I reckon I'm trying to develop a map. Do you have like a map of your networked connections and what circles they're in? It would look like a Venn diagram, like with you in the center, and. Uh, I just dropped Bobby's name into the okay. uh, into the chat here so that you can get the spelling right. Um, and no, I don't. But what an amazing idea! I love that. Uh, yeah, because well, in, in I have a mental map of people from Moneyless Society, uh, people from the neurodivergent community, people from the degrowth community. You know, I've got that the, the the they all of these have some overlap, but the discon there's a disconnect in not seeing uh, one another in some way or another. Right. I'm just sort of jumping from 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 group to group to group and. Um, what like what would you say your well let's see so what you just said maps to me as like uh is an insight that that i uh that i i had and i i want to try and get it out here so like what i realized the other day was that uh, that there's that there's there's a movement happening. The movement, capital T, capital M, is already happening. Yeah. And the like loci, the loci, loci, the loci of energy. You know, uh, there's multiple loci of energy, and that in some sense, like what I hear you, what I heard you saying is is like these loci of energy don't necessarily realize that that like their 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 trajectories are like largely pointed in the same direction and i think that's like the movement and the movement is something about uh like enabling uh the people that are already in it to start seeing it and to see like uh their their co-conspirators across other uh other like mimetic territory or, or loci of, right. of, uh, of energy and so the, and, and... the loci of energy that I think that I'm most connected with are, well, whatever the hell Bobby's uh, like network is, is, uh, is okay. like one. That's maybe, maybe I'll, I'll I would pin that as, as, as maybe the, uh, uh, he, what he calls the, um, the new romantics, NEU romantics. Uh, there's the meta modern sphere. There's uh, the, I don't know, like, 
maybe you'd call them like the relational uh, or em embodiment you know? kind of sphere, the regen sphere, the, uh, I don't know, I think effective accelerationist kind of sphere is really interesting because they're kind of more builder effective focused. Effective accelerationist. Okay, uh, you'd, maybe. You'd find, you'd find them on Twitter with the, uh, the, the tag E slash ACC which is kind of like a, a, a bit of a dig on the effective, like altruist kind of thing. But uh, oh, okay. um, um, who, who else? I'd say the, uh, the micro solidarity like sphere, uh -huh. some other one, yeah. uh, right? Um, yeah, those are the- Okay, maybe I, I actually didn't know what I was asking is, um, so like yours, and my thing is to make this public on media. Yes. Uh, so the, the multidimensional overlap there would then be to connect with people who already have systems for... Okay, I'm gonna shut my brain off. <laughs> Welcome Syst back, Mark. No, systems for continue. Please. Um, for disseminating information and ideas so that in the interest of, I mean, in the interest of you, you create a platform, people come around it. So at the same time that we have all these disconnected movements going in the same direction, they don't know, they don't know about each other because there's not a some a representative from each of those movements to make that information public to all to mm. just to talk about the overlaps and the systems and the universality does that make sense it so could, certainly does yeah so like is the is the is the action here to reach out specifically to people in those communities who want to form who want to talk about the overlaps, form a platform about the overlaps. Yeah. Does that uh, make so, sense? Oh, dude. So so this totally like zhuzhes with uh, a conversation um, that I had uh, in breakout immediately or like within the event the other day. And I did re record. Oh, I'm going to I'm going to drop like the the transcript and like the video recording, which I kind of fudged and uh, thought okay. that I was cat thought that I was capturing it like this, but instead it was just my video. So you just kind of hear hear the <laughs> hear the conversation and kind of see my reactions and whatnot. But uh, but it uh, it's it's a really it was a really beautiful conversation and it oriented something towards um, uh, like a decentralized content factory uh, is is like kind of one aspect of it, where the uh, the folks that that are like. You know, in these uh, in these various pockets, can kind of contribute to to sharing their voice to this like to the main narrative here. That main narrative being like I don't know that shared that shared direction that's kind of common across them. Another aspect of the, uh, that that came up is uh, I'd call like something like mimetic mediation, uh, which Meta is meta what m mimet mimetic mediation. Mm -hmm. right? So mimetic mediation being the uh, the process uh, of finding finding or like doing translation across like different uh, okay. uh, different perspectives, right? Uh, yeah. And um, lastly, the uh, so like. Actually, yeah, I, I can see a version of what I'm doing, kind of, uh, I don't know, creating that something as like a, a byproduct of, of like having these conversations with people that are kind of coming from different angles. Uh, so so my, my contribution to that content factory is probably something like this, uh, but with, uh, with, a, you know, with, with, a, with folks that are kind of coming at it from their own, their own direction maybe trying to find a, a, a universal a universal across them and so like i see mark like this is uh this is a place totally where we can where we can play yeah and what's happening uh jess 
And I once I get going, I get really going. You can tell, right? There's a lot to say. <laughs> yeah. So sorry about that. Right. Uh, and and Brett wants to do his thing here, Victor, in the next two minutes. I don't know if you're going to go to that. Oh yeah, totally. Or we can invite him here. You know, this platform is really kind of incredible. Um, but I guess I don't know if Jesse want to come and join us for 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 Brett's thing or how you know this is a pretty big download. Um, but I feel like you're already in this space, so maybe it wasn't that bad. But yeah, if Brett's still doing his thing, we go over to this other guy. I don't know. Uh -huh. Do you know Brett? Does she know Brett? I don't. Yeah, Brett's pretty cool. Oh, yeah. Brett's like another generalist in a way. I think you can kind of go deeper in some areas, but he's a connector. And I feel like you guys are definitely connectors. And I feel like we're all looking for this universal. But I do think um, this Hegel stuff is solving the, the question in a way that catapults us. Uh -huh. And people say, well, it's Hegel. That's not a universal. That's one dude. But it's sort of like Copernicus. Copernicus discovered the universal model of the solar system. Like everybody embraces this model of the solar system now. So we don't say it's Copernicus's thing. We just say it's the truth. The universe right. is elliptical. That's what Hegel does. Yeah, he discovered it, but it's really the science of logic and it's the universal logic. Mm -hmm. So it's hard to get away from because he actually defines the words he uses in this mystical kind of way where all the opposites are inside of them. So it's scientific and it's religious it's art and it's it's science it's it's male and it's female it's capitalist and it's communist it's it's metaphysical and it's not it's like all of them are happening in the word spirit